South Africans have been startled by the incriminating evidence that has been uncovered in the Senzo Mayua murder trial. The state witness, Zandile Kumalo, was the first to take the stand, followed by Kaya Mkashe and Tabiseng Muketi, and a cell phone data expert, Colonel Lambetta Stain, as the trial takes another turn on the new presiding judge, Rata Mokwateng. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tampo Malukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined uh, in studio via Zoom by advocate Tieti Ramatikis, uh, you know, just to help us unpack uh, the latest news and developments on the Senzo Mewa case. He joins us via Zoom there. Advocate, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to Soweto Today. Good afternoon and uh, also good afternoon to yourself and the viewers. Much appreciated. You know, I want us to begin here. Um, Kelly Kumalo's sister, Zandi Le Kumalo, uh, you know, particularly on this, um, um, uh, the, the case itself, was asked by advocate uh, Zandi Le Mcholo what she meant when she said police should not investigate Mayua's wife, uh, Mandisa. I mean, should also investigate uh, uh, Mayua's wife, Mandisa Mkize. Why has there not been any investigation on her so far, you know, in the trial? Because we know that, uh, obviously, the people that are in the house, you know, um, they are coming, including the neighbours there. But uh, Mayua's um, uh, wife was not included there. Maybe let's start there. Yeah, you, you, you'll remember that when this matter started, we also happen to know that there are two dockets. Remember, it's also the decision of the National Prosecuting Authority to decide uh, what uh, to prosecute, when to prosecute, depending on the investigations, depending on the information that has been gathered by the investigate, uh, invest investigators, more particularly in this case, we're talking about uh, the South African Police Service. So it means at that time, uh, there was no information that leads to any other direction except the direction which they focused on. So it was not uh, really a place to dictate or direct uh, the investigators or the subs uh, which direction to go because they were following whatever piece of evidence that they got up to so far. Uh, we're still asking ourselves uh, what actually happened, why did they decide to leave the other docket and follow the other uh, with the advice from the uh, uh, NPA. So it was really not uh, for anyone who is a witness or who is an accused to direct the investigators. I mean, there's quite a lot of developments, particularly in the last uh, two weeks, if I may put it that way, with uh, the, uh, you know, um, revelations, particularly in court there. Let's talk about accused number three, you know, uh, there was an issue of the pictures of him in drag logs uh, found in his phone, which confirms uh, previous testimonies of the witnesses saying that uh, one of the intruders at the Kumalo household had dreadlocks when Mayua was short. Not forgetting the pictures of items such as, you know, the guns, which he particularly saved as my killing machine in his phone and a panga. So being that, uh, you know, witnesses have been given testimonies uh, rather have given testimonies. So where does this testimony put accused uh, Mtokozi C. Mube as they corroborate witnesses' testimonies? I mean, now we are asking ourselves why were those pictures, uh, I mean, there, I mean, I mean, written that way, particularly in his phone? Yeah, you see, uh, uh, the court deals with uh, evidence. And the evidence must be tendered by witnesses who have witnessed uh, the incident and or sometimes who have any particular knowledge or expertise that will help the court to understand so that at the end the court arrives at a just and appropriate uh, decision. So in, in this instance, uh, a few things we can mention. There are so many revelations that are coming out that uh, to many people who are outside, who are not part of the proceedings, we still trying to understand as to what exactly happened. Because one, if I can indicate the evidence now, uh, remember the accused we are talking about, he has been placed on the scene by witnesses who said he was there, but he had dreadlocks. And I understand that uh, 
He is the representative uh, initially in the in the first hearing, uh, not not the re hearing as it is happening now. He is the one who was uh, saying he did not have dreadlocks and so forth and uh, so forth. But now. Uh, with this evidence coming up, it, it, it's now corroborating what other uh, witnesses have said in terms of identification of uh, of the of the intruder. But again, uh, it doesn't end there. It also we also have the evidence of a, an expert witness from or a data analyst from from SAPS, who also came with uh, shocking revelations. So we still need to understand and hear evidence. That will be led by the state as to what exactly happened in terms of this uh, content of the cell phones. We have heard that uh, also that there was a call or communication that has been made between Kane and the other accused. And also now we have got these revelations in terms of the content of the cell phone of uh, one of the accused that he had uh, pictures that resembles uh, a person who has been identified, uh, you know, on the scene or as the intruder on the day of the incident. Let us shift this to Zandile Kumalo, but before we do that, I want us to look at uh, uh, one of these inserts whereby he was, I mean, she was giving a testimony in court uh, there um, a few weeks ago. The Senzo Mayiwa murder trial resumed two weeks back at the Pretoria High Court under the new presiding judge, Hata Mokhateng. The sister of Kelly Kumalo, Zandile Kumalo, was the first state witness to testify on what happened on the night Mayiwa was gunned down. In her testimony, Kumalo told the court that one of the intruders had dreadlocks, dark-skinned, tall and was wearing a hat. However, Kumalo's testimony raised eyebrows as in an interview she did years ago with another media house, she claimed to not remember any of the intruders and how they looked. Kumalo also cleared rumors that there was a fight between herself and her then boyfriend, Longwe Twala, on the night Meiwa was killed. For Soweto TV News, I am Masachaba. I mean, obviously, there's been inconsistencies in uh, Zandile Kumalo's evidence in court, as we heard in the, in, in, you know, in the insert like statements that sh she actually gave to the police between 2014 and 2018. One of which is when she claimed that uh, she had, uh, you know, frozen. She had frozen after one of uh, the intruders pointed a firearm at her. But she goes on to say that uh, she actually did mention it to the police and that it was their fault, uh, you know, it was not put on paper. What happens in a case where a statement like this is not put on paper for evidence? We did speak about the first and the second docket. Somehow, somehow you know, it causes a bit of confusion. There, there is no confusion at all, except where in a situation where there is, a, a, you know, a material contradiction. Remember, statements which are made by the police is not uh, a statement that explain entirely what happened on the date of the incident. I've done so many cases where you, know, you find that witnesses are starting to mention new things in court, but you'll find that they are not in the statement. But not necessarily, it does not necessarily mean that uh, uh, whatever they are saying did not take place. Remember, they're just reducing everything in writing. You can write, for example, that I woke up on this day, uh, the first thing I woke up, I went to brush my teeth, and then from there, I went to take a shower. From there, I went to, you know, those are, it doesn't mean that those things, they did not happen. But what is important is the evidence that will help uh, the court to solve the problem before it. So it's neither here nor there, except where there is material contradiction in terms of the happening of the incident. That is where maybe the problem is. But where some of the things are not reduced in writing, it does not mean that they are not the truth or it does not mean that they did not happen. Let us take a quick ad break. Uh, we're coming back uh, with more on this conversation after this. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwan. We're still in conversation with Advocate Tieti Ramatikisa, who is helping us understand the latest developments on the Senzo Meiwa murder trial that took place last week at the Pretoria High Court. Uh, the matter is still in court uh, to this day. Uh, Advocate, uh, you know, the testimonies of state witnesses and uh, neighbors uh, of the Kumalos, Kaya Kashe, and in Tabiseng Moketi, um, we, we saw Kaya's stance on the incident 
did not corroborate. You did mention the issues of statements, uh, you know, did not corroborate uh, Zandile Kumalo's um, uh, in terms of what, you know, what the person, uh, who was the person that was standing against the wall there in the kitchen, uh, you know, that person was wearing what and what happens. Uh, the issue is what happens when there are different versions of the story, but you did explain it. But I want us to listen to this insert that uh, has been compiled by one of our reporters, Masi Chaba Kovola. The Senzumaiwa murder trial resumed at the Pretoria High Court this morning with a cross-examination of Colonel Lambetta Stain, who is an analyst and investigating officer at the SAPS Cold Case Unit. Last week, Friday, Stain dropped a bombshell when he revealed that accused number five, Fisogu Lentuli, called his cell phone number registered to the footballer's then-girlfriend, Kelly Kumalo, twice before the Bafana Bafana captain was shot dead in October 2014. Stain also revealed that a swim swap was done on Maywa's SIM card the day he was gunned down. This morning, Stain told the court that none of the people who were present on the night Maywa was shot called the police or an ambulance. For Soweto TV News, I am Masachaba Kobola. So, uh, Advocate, I mean, you know, there's quite a lot of developments. I, I just want you to take, you know, just to unpack it for us, you know, this case has been, seems like it has been taking some twists and turns, particularly with uh, the revelations that are coming now, uh, you know, with what transpired before the case was rebooted. We, we seem to be hearing quite a lot of new things, uh, you know, from the witnesses that are coming to the stand there. It shows that uh, somewhere, somehow there is development on this case. Indeed, there is development and uh, shocking evidence that is, uh, is it's, it's coming. Unfortunately, uh, what happened in the previous uh, trial that has been ab abandoned, it cannot be used uh, now. But uh, we need to hear, especially from uh, uh, both sides, the, uh, the, the NPA and the, the, uh, the, the defense counsels, they need to ventilate this issue as to uh, what was the communication between accused, uh, I think it's accused number five, and uh, Kelly Kumar. And with certainty, we need uh, to, to understand as to who called who. Uh, because, you see, uh, if, if a witness comes, remember, the people who are now uh, being talked about, they have not yet testified. Mm. They, if they happen to testify, they can come with a valid, valid, valid reasons to say this is what happened. Uh, unfortunately, we, they also need to, uh, to to explain the coincident that uh, uh, that there's okay to say that uh, person was in the house, uh, you know, when someone was killed, and also the person who is alleged to be an intruder. Uh, they communicated. Where did they meet? What was their what nature of their business? So we need to hear that. For now. I would not want us to, uh, you know, draw any conclusion because we might still be shocked in terms of whatever explanation that will come uh, up with the, any of the witnesses if they decide to testify. But if there is something tangible in terms of the communication and between the accused number five and uh, the and 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 uh, Kelly Kumalo, then it means thorough investigations need to be done with certainty. Uh, before uh, the, the uh, SAPs and the NPA decide to charge to charge any other person or any additional person, uh, and this might happen separately because now this trial has already started. Accused persons have already pleaded, so it means if there is tangible evidence and there is a person who is linked to this uh, incident, then that person might have to be tried uh, separately or after these ones. I mean, speaking about that issue, there was an issue also of the SIM swap that was conducted on the number of um, uh, the late uh, Senzo May were there. And then we heard that uh, it, it was placed in the handset of a former footballer, there, that's uh, David Matebula. So there's quite a lot that happened during the testimony. We also heard also that uh, actually the people that were in the house did not in fact call the police or even call the EMS when that happened this somewhere somehow changes you know as you said that we shouldn't do it, it's too early to draw up any conclusions but somewhere somehow it it you know it gives 
a direction of where this case is supposed to go, particularly looking at, uh, you know, how people have said that, uh, you know, these might not be the, the right people on the dock or, you know, the right people that should be charged are the people that are actually in the house. So there's quite a lot that's happening and then at a fast pace, if I may put it that way. Yeah, I, I can answer in a very short phrase, uh, you know. Uh, I think uh, subs need to do their work. It shows that there's a lot that still need to be investigated and confirmed. The other thing that I don't understand, especially with the investigation and how the NPA, they're conducting this trial, is that when did they learn about this communication? Uh, for example, the communication between... Uh, Kayle and accused number five, the exchange of SIM cards, uh, who did not uh, call who, or, I mean, people who were in, in, inside the house, they did not call uh, the ambulance or the police, all those things. When did they start learning about those things? Because those, I understand, they, they should have known uh, uh, from the early stages of their investigation. So even delaying you know, charging any other person who is now being suspected or who is now being linked by any other evidence. I don't know the reason why it's delayed. Because remember, we are talking about the matter which took a very long time, a very long time, many years, in a matter that they should have like done thorough investigations, coming up with something tangible in court, telling us what exactly happened in terms of their investigations. And then we wait to hear the state, the other state witnesses corroborating what they found in terms of uh, their investigations. I want us to take a quick head break. Uh, we're coming back after this just to wrap up the conversation and just to touch on particularly, uh, you know, on uh, uh, how will the court evaluate uh, Zandile Kumalo and Tabiseng Mukete's testimony. Uh, you know, as we heard, uh, you know, there have been turbulences in telling the truth according to the defense there. Let us uh, take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Molokwani. Uh, we're still in conversation with Advocate Tieti Ramatikis about the shocking new revelations in the Santa Maywa Meda trial, uh, you know, that has been happening, which is currently on there at the High Court in Pretoria. Uh, Advocate uh, Ramatikis is still joining us via Zoom. Uh, Advocate, uh, thanks very much for staying on. You know, I want to look at you highlighted, uh, you know, s something very important saying that um, the case should have been, you know, there, sh there could have been investigations, you know, um, throughout the years. I mean, it's been almost a decade now. Um, let's talk about uh, the state's capability, you know, in affecting uh, convictions or in, a, in, 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 in affecting cases to be concluded. Do you think that, uh, you know, with the new judge being appointed now, uh, that's advocate, uh, I mean, Judge uh, Mokwateng, uh, are we confident that uh, we'll be able to see, uh, you know, things move slu uh, smoothly and then uh, we'll be able to finish this trial soon? Uh, uh I think I understand your question in terms of, uh, you know, um, two important uh, segments. One being the judge. Uh, I think the judge is doing a good job. He's in control of the trial. He's always present. You can see that uh, he's uh, directing the, the trial and also not allowing anything that, uh, you know, is not of uh, importance to this trial, you know, taking place. So uh, he doesn't allow any side show. He is focusing on what he's supposed to do. That is the first part. The second part, it's, um, you know, in South Africa, we have a big challenge in terms of the lack of, uh, you know, uh, capabilities, lack of expertise in the law enforcement, especially when it comes to investigations and also the issue of the National Prosecuting Authority. We also have a situation where in you will find that uh, there are cases that are not being tried simply because NPA does not have expertise to try those, uh, you know, matters. Uh, sometimes, if um, you have, um, uh, you know, listened to them not so long, they are even trying to talk about uh, outsourcing some of these, uh, you know, uh, 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 important uh, matters because they need uh, people with expertise to come and help them. So. 
it's it's a big challenge because without uh, proper investigations, uh, without proper expertise from SAPS, without proper expertise from uh, NPA, then it means uh, we are not doing anything. Uh, you know, we still have we're going to have a challenge of crime, lawlessness in the country. Um, I mean, are we likely to see, uh, you know, other witnesses coming uh, that we haven't seen before uh, that uh, the uh, before the case was rebooted? I know that uh, um, uh, Togo CC Twala is, is is back in the stand. Um, you know, are, are we likely to see some of the people in the house also coming in and giving testimony so that we may be able to understand further what actually transpired uh, that night? It, it is highly possible. It is highly possible because you can see that the state now has changed the tactic. You can see even the lineup of witnesses has changed. So we'll never know who is coming. Uh, we'll never know whom, like now, they've considered that uh, this person need to come and testify. Mm. Uh, I mean, after, after everything that transpired, uh, I mean, you said it, that it's way too early now to uh, rather make uh, conclusions, you know, premature conclusions. But um, is there, you know, light at the end of the tunnel, if I may put it that way? It is, at this stage, I can tell you that it's still very confusing. Uh, even us who are not, uh, you know, who are legal experts in terms of how this trial is being run, especially uh, the manner in which uh, evidence is being presented with different witnesses coming, different versions and so forth. We still yet to see, we still yet to understand as to where is exactly this trial going? Where is it, uh, um, you know, where is it in terms of uh, the people who are accused? Where is it in terms of the people who now we hear that they might uh, be linked to the incident? So it's still confusing at this state. That is why I said it is premature to understand what is going to happen. Remember, because the state has got a duty to prove this uh, case beyond reasonable doubt as it is a criminal matter. Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, normally with such a crime, uh, you know, uh, if a person is found guilty, uh, you know, um, how much, how, how many years uh, may they get in terms of uh, the type of offence that it is? We, we, we must not expect anything less than a life sentence. Mm. No, Advocate uh, uh, Ramatikisi, thanks very much for taking the time. I wish we had uh, more time, but we'll definitely have you just to, you know, as the time progresses, as the case moves along just to get a sense of uh, you know what has been going on uh, with this case and also giving us your legal opinion on the developments there at the high court in pretoria thanks very much for taking the time thank you very much uh, to you and the uh, viewers much appreciated that was advocate uh, tiet ramatikisi giving us his insights on the latest development on the nine-year-long murder trial of Bafana Bafana captain and Orlando Pirates goalkeeper Senzo Meiwa from suspicious cell phone records to the defense accusing witnesses Ntabiseng Mwakete, Zandile Kumalo, you know, of fabricating their testimonies. The trial promises to get more grilling. But uh, as you heard the advocate saying that uh, it's too early to make conclusions. There's still a lot uh, that uh, we might be uh, hearing in uh, the months and the weeks to come. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of So It's Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode by simply sending us an email. It's uh, Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.